Hello, beautiful humans, and welcome to Grow As We Go. Hello, everyone. I'm Angie. I'm Ashley. I'm Fatima. And I'm Diana. So we're continuing the conversation of woman representation throughout this month and this episode we kind of want to focus on like how we grew up i guess because Mm -hmm. we figured that there's like like we don't we want to just make sure that we're not really redundant with our information so we think it's cool if we give you guys like another perspective of like how we grew up and how we saw like woman inter um woman representation Mm -hmm. that's super important i mean because the way that we grew up and what we were around surrounded by growing up has really influenced how we are now so Mm -hmm. exactly that's something super important to talk about because it has shaped us for the good and for the for bad possibly in some ways so (laughs) let's talk about it that's something that i always thought about because i'm like how impactful was like our influence on ourselves because like i have a niece and i see how like she watches like youtube and like all these disney shows and then she's like Mm -hmm. like relaying the information that she's learning and i'm like was it really like that impactful impactful to me yeah Mm -hmm. no seriously as kids i mean diana you have you have two little nephews and fatty you have a little brother like oh three three nephews i mean do you we see how they're sponges like they literally absorb everything and i think it obviously has shaped what they're what they see on um in the media and i hate saying in the media in in the media that sounds so old how do you like, say we sound so old <laughs> what do you like mean? in the media like in the- and i feel like a little old person <laughs> like so influential yeah and reflecting back i was always watching all these tv shows all these movies about these women that always okay like what name a few (laughs) all right name five name five name five right now (laughs) um let's see movies like uh uh what is it beauty and the beast oh like the princesses Uh yeah the princesses or even hannah montana and <laughs> with mean girls place, mean girls all <laughs> these they always depicted mm-hmm. women as like the same type of model that that was very embedded into our minds you know and looking mm-hmm. back i'm like damn i didn't i took that as like i want to be that like that's how i should be like you know mm-hmm. let's talk about how we, there is always a man figure that always had to be like um idolized by a woman and how a woman needed to you know have his love in order to feel love and all these things that we can continuously talk about but i think that's very prominent now that i'm reflecting because that is instilled in me or i'm aware that Mm -hmm. it's instilled in me that i i i need the attention of a man to feel empowered or to feel Mm -hmm. any type of acknowledgement Mm -hmm. and worthiness and throughout my high school Mm -hmm. years i would always um do that and like looking back i feel sorry for myself because i would feel like i needed some these men's attention to feel that certain way and if i didn't then i would feel unworthy of or not enough of or like if Mm. other girls would get their attention i would feel um like shitty or it, it would it would taunt me for no reason but it was because i was embedded with this idea of like what how, you grew up with in yeah the media. yeah exactly no, I agree. Growing up, I noticed that I did not like the Little Mermaid. Growing up, like I for really? some reason I did not like her story, and I remember me getting so upset um, that she gave up, her, like literally speaking, because oh, I think that frustrated guy, me. Right? Watching it, it would fr- I, even though I love mermaids, I thought the idea of mermaids was like exquisite, mm-hmm. but the fact that she literally gave up speaking frustrated me because i'm like you gave up speaking for a guy for a guy that you met on a boat like i remember me being little being like what the like and she's i now looking back it's like super weird because she's like underage like gave up speaking and Mm -hmm. like it's just weird weird and i get it because she's i just want to be a part of your world and i know it's for a deeper meaning she wanted to be her own person or whatever but i i don't know sitting growing up like her story didn't didn't sit right with me yeah yeah I feel like the Cheeto girls are very, like, impactful in my life. Um, Mm -hmm. I think just because um, Adrian, or what was her name during, I forgot what her name was during, the girl with the the Latina girl with her hair. That was, like, 
reflecting i feel like she was the first latina figure that i've ever yeah. seen on disney channel growing up or yeah. anything as and like remember, not the side chick like not even yeah. a side chick but like well, as i think the, her name was like chi chi or bom um what was her name to um i don't know what her I don't know what her name was. I remember, I used to look up to her, and then she had curly hair, and I was like, "Oh my god, I have curly hair too!" <laughs> and then, like, the, like I literally like felt her problems. I felt them, and I, like I could really relate to her. So I feel like she was somebody that I like looked up to growing up, and like I was like mm. adore her, and I was a cheetah mm. girl. <laughs> Maybe that's why I like cheetah now. <laughs> <laughs> Insight. <laughs> oh, I think that's yeah. really crazy, though. Like growing up, now reflecting, I remember especially with the Disney princesses, like, when, you know, when you're all with all your friends, and they'd be like, okay, everybody pick your princess, and, like, mm-hmm. I had, like, obviously some friends who were, like, fair skin, and, like, lighter, like, blonde hair, and, like, they had a plethora of options, like, they had mm-hmm. Cinderella, they had, mm-hmm. um, like, Sleeping Beauty, they had Rapunzel, Rapunzel they had yes. Tinkerbell, and I remember me being, like, oh, damn, like, who am I gonna pick? Like, the closest oh. brown princess was Jasmine and, um, Pocahontas. And Pocahontas, but even then, like, they were of different descent, you know? Yeah, like, like I, they weren't, like, I'm, they weren't, like, as important mm, as, like, yeah. these other Yeah, men. they weren't the main girls, and the and they were they were different descent. And also, too, um, the only brunette was Belle, but she was French. <laughs> like, she was white, you know? So there's no representation, I guess, growing up. And so I could see why um, the Cheetah Girls was so influential, because that's the first time we see someone who mirrors us or our culture on tv and as a mm-hmm. little girl like that's everything like and you then look when at your dolls like, and you you yeah. want to be them like yeah even your barbies bro i remember we're talking about barbies on <laughs> yeah i remember like when i saw the cheetah girls i remember looking at adrian like oh my gosh she talks spanish oh like she has that mm-hmm. accent or she does like latina things she wasn't she wasn't doing americanized um yeah what's it called her gestures. Yeah, her gestures. And, like, her issues. Yeah. Do you guys and feel then, that it was, like, representative, truly? Or was it, like, some um, a little exaggerated? Like, how do you guys feel about it? Because, honestly, I don't remember, so I can't really speak. So I'm just curious to know. I think it was the style back then. Because you know how Chicana things were the style back then? How it was, like, Chola. Mm. I don't want to say Chola version. But I think it was just, like, a style in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. So, if that makes sense. I don't. Yeah. So, I don't think it was exa- exaggerated. I, I yeah now that I think about it I don't think her character was exaggerated because that maybe because I haven't seen the movie in a long time but I'm curious to see like if I were to watch the movie now like would it sit right with me but I think I really liked like what Fatima was saying was that like the dialect like she would have like little um his her like Spanglish. Um, Spanglish and her conversation mm. with her and her mom and stuff and like her her like I remember she would always call her like her mom she'd be like ma like or kind like that yeah yeah and so i i really really like that especially when they went to barcelona was it for the second movie and then they went yeah. to barcelona and then they went i think her name they met belinda which is like a, oh yeah she, at the time oh, she, she was, was like, really popping yeah oh I, I remember for, i got like, so excited my, i told her i was like mom mm-hmm. belinda. And i was like oh my god <laughs> yeah and so there is a part in the in the show where they sing the song um it's like a good night song a good yeah and then i thought that was like a i thought that that was like a cultural thing like everybody mm. knew that song so i remember vividly asking my mom like oh did you grow up listening to this song and my mom would be like what <laughs> and then she's okay. like that's just for the movie and i'm like oh okay but like it's crazy to like that i thought like oh because they sing it in that that sh- movie then everybody from latin descent knows that song which is still yeah. dumb for me to think but it's crazy to see like how influential it can be mm-hmm. and also um brats have you guys seen the movie oh, brats? yeah i think that was the first movie that i've seen that they had different nationalities being represented mm-hmm. and i thought that was so cool to 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 see when i was a child and i was i i think i still am obsessed with that movie because of i that. love that movie yeah <laughs> But then I'm like, do they really... I think for the time, it was... Obviously, now looking back and see how much we advanced, thankfully, even though we got a lot of work to do, obviously, there's a lot of things that are prob- problematic with that movie or, mm-hmm, like, the representation. Yeah. But I think for the for its time, like, it did... It was... It did, it did well. 
you I know, remember we felt like holy crap like you bringing yeah. up brats made me think about I think in that scene like the girl was trying to get some guy's attention as well that's why she breaks through with her friendship because she's so worried about fitting in in order for the boy to like her right is that kind of like the scenario I haven't seen it in a long time yeah is it? so I feel like that's another reason that shows like how like women are like objectified and kind of seen as like oh you ha- always have to be chasing a man but in reality you don't need a man and that's kind of sad because we didn't grow up learning that mm-hmm. and you, you can only see how it affected all these other girls and like you might ask like what's the importance of like representation but representation is so important because growing up if it's kind of like you see you're you're able to see yourself in their position and then you're able to in future like your career and like do things like sometimes like what they're interested can spark interest in you and so therefore like it leads you to do greater stuff so i feel like that's why rep- representation is important but it's kind of sad that sometimes um this rep- representation of female figures in the media is kind of perceived as like like they're just like women and they're glorified because of mm-hmm. their woman and their body type and how they can attract men when it's kind of like we're more than that and i feel like there hasn't been a breakthrough that shows that but i feel like recently throughout the years it has been a breakthrough but just like for us growing up there wasn't kind of like that breakthrough mm-hmm. that i can think of right now yeah and having that like, little woman yeah was like damn yeah for sure and i think having that lack of representation can really um make a be heavy on a child because they'll be Mm -hmm. they think like how you were sharing with us angie how you thought that you didn't really fit in or you were like where do i where am i in this and maybe that can also trigger a child to think that being that is way better than being authentically who they are and then like maybe subconsciously throughout their life they'll be trying to strive to look this way and act this way as it's being portrayed on the media but it's not really like embracing themselves because i don't think that's really shown or projected onto the media yeah i remember so vividly like asking my mom like when i would go to the store and she had like um i genuinely liked playing with dolls like um Mm -hmm. it was just something that was really fun for me i liked dressing them up and stuff so Mm -hmm. um but i remember me going to target and i remember me asking my mom like mom like why isn't there one with brown hair and like with my skin like why do they all look like this and she's no. like oh mija it's because that's how they but i remember me being sad like being like i don't want it like i want one that looks like me like why do i always have to get this one why are all the mm, ones that are packaged gosh. the biggest with the prettiest clothes the white ones like and all the side ones like yeah. the darker girls mm-hmm. had like the littlest pe- like the you know how like poly pockets had like the main one and then the side little pieces with the different dolls like and it was like that for Barbie, for all the other other girl, quote unquote, girl toys, like that. Yeah, you opened up like this portal in my mind, like, going, going back, back to like, because like, you know, like I don't know, I, I knew, knew what type of Barbies, Barbies I had, I had or whatever. whatever. And like my most favorite Barbie that I ever had growing up, she was like a tan girl. She had like brown <laughs> hair and she had like little blonde highlights. I don't know where she was from, but I remember, I remember I loved her so much. And it's crazy now that I think about it. It's like it's so crazy how like that was mm-hmm. my favorite Barbie maybe because she was like she looked a little bit like me and she wasn't like all these typical white barbies which is crazy like i didn't think about that until right now yeah and you know thinking about it now that's actually affected me when i was a child because i remember me trying to not be tan for that exact reason to strive to have be light skin like i used to always stay away from the sun when i was small because i was like no i want to be light like i I like to be light. like no 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 no." and now i'm like wow that that really influenced me because now i'm like no i want to tan i want to like be darker (laughs) i want to you know embrace my skin but before i would always want to be lighter i would i was always wow that does that's so crazy because i never saw it like that when i was little i would just grab dolls whichever one i wanted but when i when i was younger i would listen to music and a lot of sing- guy singers would talk about morenas like they'll say morenas morenas um, and i would like why morenas why can't it be weritas like why always morenas? Oh. <laughs> and i was always so sad and i was like because we're we're ugly and my cousin always embedded in my head like oh it's because morenas are prettier and i was just like Oh, I'm sad. So, like, it always stood to me, like, oh, I don't like being a weta because I'm ugly. Or everybody always prefers morenas. But you know what? I think that has a lot to do within Hispanic culture, mm-hmm. how they're kind of, like, when you're seen as, like, a white passing Hispanic, people who are, like, darker skin tone, like, you know, like, there's that mm-hmm. prejudice within each other's um race. Yeah. Like, 
Mexicans can be racist towards each other. Mm-hmm. So if they see like this light skinned, fair skinned girl, they're kind of, I feel like it's perceived as like they're envious of her because she's white passing mm-hmm. and she, that gives her more privilege, mm-hmm. right? So then obviously you're going to be like, well, I'm going to make a song dedicated to all the brown folks. Yeah. So I feel like it's like, that's like, a, it's crazy to see how, yeah, I guess the, ra- the racism within each other's ethnicity mm-hmm. yeah. can play a role. I mean, because I agree, dude, Dan. I remember I used to get really sad. I used to cry when I would get sunburned what? and, like, get tan. Like, come on. Like, because I that prejudice, oh. exactly. Like, I didn't want to get dark, like, yeah. darker because I, I didn't know how to embrace my skin or I thought it was it was bad, you know? Or, like, I thought it was not beautiful. And I'm yeah. like, dang. And speaking about this, I think even still to today, like you, you can clearly see how the media has such influence on women and what their body should be like and how they should kind of look at, look like. Like for example, Kendall Jenner's picture went viral, with she was wearing like a red bikini and she had like a flat stomach and stuff. And on Twitter, like a whole lot of women kept just saying like, "I wish like if I had Kendall Jenner, Kendall Jenner's body, like all my problems would go away." And kind of just women comparing them themselves to what they would want to look like and obviously you can still see, see how that's still an issue to this day but i think what's the main takeaway is that the media isn't there to like the media there is very influential but at the same time we shouldn't use it to compare ourselves to who they are and we should kind of take pride in what our body shape is and like what we have because at the end of the day that's also beautiful as well because that makes us us you know but it's crazy to see that you still see like the influence of media that could lead to body dysmorphia and like Mm -hmm. if we're not being open and honest to procedures like or open and honest to photoshop it could be very damaging to Mm -hmm. how we view ourselves because there are all these unrealistic expectations you know um but i mean all power to if you're i just think being honest all the time i feel like we could all agree that um the big three on disney channel like selena Hannah Montana Demi. and Demi were very influential figures in oh, our yeah. lives oh. growing up. Like, can we talk about that? Like, how do how how was how did we feel about that? Like, as a child, me looking at Selena Gomez's character, I was always like, "Oh my God, yeah!" But I don't know why. <laughs> oh, you know, I think I liked her you know because I mean? she was a badass. Like, she did not yeah. give a crap about anybody and anything, and like, she kind of like stood her ground all the time, and like, mm-hmm. she was just so. Like, not, I don't know the right word to say, but she was just so rough and very, um, yeah. like, she was very comfortable in her skin and she showed it and mm-hmm. she did not let anything go past by her. And I really liked that about her. I loved her mm-hmm. style, too. I remember always, like, mm-hmm. trying to copy her her outfits yeah. to school. <laughs> Me, too. <laughs> she was, like, more and grungy. She, like Yeah. She layered yeah. her outfits a lot and I one time I always tried to do them and I was like, what are you wearing? <laughs> I remember the the even the mom in that show. She reminded me a lot of, like my mom. Yeah, um, oh, she kind of does look like her. <laughs> <laughs> Inserts a picture of my mom. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, we could relate to it because it's she acted like mm-hmm. a Latina mom, and we all have Latina moms. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's crazy because now that I'm I'm comparing comparing like between Hannah Montana, Demi Lovato, and Selena Gomez. Obviously, they each have their own shows, but I think. And I I think that's why I didn't really feel connected to like Hannah Montana or like Sunny with a Chance mm. or whatever really? her show was. Mm. Like I still like them. Don't get me wrong. Like I still like love them. But like if it was between like there are all three, all three of those were on. I would always just like watch Reservoir Dogs really plays. Cause, mm. I don't know. I thought that was like easier yeah. to watch and fun. I was gung ho Hannah Montana growing up. But like I think that really? hit that stage hit when I was a little bit younger though. And then Wizards hit when I, like too. probably like a year or two after. But in the beginning, Hannah Montana was my shizness. I remember me and Brittany for third grade. We dressed for for Halloween. She was a blonde Hannah Montana, and that was Miley Cyrus for Halloween. <laughs> oh <what? laughs> yeah, because there was, I just remember um, liking Miley Cyrus because she was so like, so like, I do what I want type of girl too. Like she was very um, mm-hmm. super headstrong, and I really like seeing that. Like Maya and Miguel. Oh my God! Yes, let's talk about Maya and Miguel. I never that watched. That used to be oh, my favorite my show. Miguel. Like favorite show, and I feel like it has to do a lot with their skin tones, and like the Hispanic culture that was going on in that yeah. show. Like I love that show so much. 
I did not watch it. What was it? What show? Where was this on? It was on PBS. Oh, PBS. Dang. Yeah, PBS Kids. Wait. So now that we've talked about this, like, how do you think these like these shows like this media kind of influence you? Kind of like to feel like a certain pressure growing up. Well, I did feel discouraged of my own authentic self because it was not as portrayed as I would want to. And like I said before, like my skin color, I wanted it to be lighter. My hair, I didn't really like it. Like all these things um, affected my confidence and my thoughts that I had when I was younger because I felt like I wasn't enough. But I also the hugest influence was about the men and how I thought that a man needed to um, be this the representation of my worthiness um, mm. towards the world. And I think that for me is like the biggest point that has like affected my being when I was in high school, like slash middle school, shesh, elementary school. Mm. When we were growing up, I think there was a lack of different narratives being told in the movies and in the shows like especially with disney movies disney movies were very or i mean are still very influential like, yeah i um, mean now it's starting to change with like moana and other like frozen um with some characters that don't have a love interest and i think that's so important because i don't really remember um it's very i can name a plethora of movies with female leads that ha- always have a love interest or their their storyline centers around having or a like love interest. like that's their motive. And for mm. uh, movies or entertainment media for men, for boys, men, um, that center around a love interest, like I don't, that was never really a thing. It was always like going on an adventure or finding, like doing mm-hmm. your work, like your life's Treasure. mission and a, like yeah. some sort of adventure and some sort of journey. And the, that journey was never in the same way Um in the female movies growing up. I think that has an effect as to why it's so... It's been difficult me now as a young adult trying to discover my, like, personal journey and, like, what that even looks like Mm. because I was... I didn't really have a big enough space to imagine it growing up. Like, the space Mm. was occupied with other things that I should be dreaming about, you know? Now that that I'm reflecting... Mm -hmm. You know. And think about it, yeah, if you had, sense. if we did have these shows and movies that you're talking about, how would that impact our younger selves? Like, would we be thriving mm-hmm. as our younger selves until we're, like, increasingly, like, you know, and, but we had to use all that mm-hmm. space, all those years of self-doubt, of lack of, mm-hmm. like, it's, 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 it's good to reflect and acknowledge that. I think that's why I also really liked, like, Mulan a lot growing up, because she didn't need that prince charming to come save her from you know she mm-hmm. fought she fought as a man for her, her family. family her dad and yeah she found like the love of her life but it did it, he wasn't uh, a necessity because she like yeah. it wasn't like the main yeah. thing yeah. yeah it wasn't the main thing and that's why i think now in movies just such as like even frozen how anna yeah she married kristoff Prost- but she she was very independent, I believe. I think she was very like, oh, I'm gonna go for it, you know. Yeah. Even though he was like, wait, wait, hold up. But she was like, yeah, whatever. In your life's journey, obviously, some people enjoy having like a significant other and their partner and stuff. But I feel like there's a perfect way to incorporate that. Like having a yeah. significant partner should not be like your your number one necessity. goal in your whole yeah. life. Like you have your other aspirations that you want to fulfill. Mm-hmm. But that's where sometimes some of these Disney movies or sometimes the media as us growing up, we mm-hmm. see it highlighted or like it's more important yeah. for women to just have that partner and find it right off the bat and that's your main goal. And, and that's once your you prior find order, him yeah. you're yeah. And then once you find him, your life is gonna be grateful and everything and their life like, is gonna what, come the, complete what happens gonna... after that like, <laughs> like mm-hmm. what do you mean like yeah. okay yeah you found the love of your life but what have, what's yeah. what is your yeah. aspirations in life like what do you need to do after that i'm really thankful that we're reflecting because i this allows us to unlearn these things and i feel like now yeah. as we're growing up we're starting to unlearn like okay in romantic relationships like how do i not make this like mm-hmm. that your priority like focus, that because yeah. we've been taught like this should be your main thing. Like, you put your all into this, like, all into that, whatever. But, yeah. you know, as young adults, we should be 
exactly focusing on our own personal journey and being selfish with our time and yeah. learning yeah. how to balance everything so i think this is also a very it's an unlearning process for us you know breaking mm-hmm. down all these things yeah and kind of have it be important that you could be successful without a partner you know because mm-hmm. it's not like you need them for you to be successful you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It kind of brings me to the question because, like, before, like, women weren't really, they didn't really have any value to them other than just, like, that they have the ability to reproduce children and stuff and kind of just please the man. So it makes me question, like, maybe that was a reason why these women didn't have any other motives in their lifestyle. Because back then, like, these Disney movies were, like, back in the, like these have been written long long and so they were based on tales from a long time ago exactly so it makes me think about that that maybe these women didn't have anything else going on in their lifestyle mm-hmm. because unfortunately that's how women were treated back day back mm-hmm. in the days mm-hmm. like they didn't they didn't have any value to them like they didn't they weren't it was just your please pleasure to the man a company in their journey mm-hmm. and i think it's proper <laughs> we're in 2021 and i think it's it's important to realize that we need to kind of let go of that narrative that was many years ago mm-hmm. you know yeah and i think reflecting on this that's exactly what we need for the future and i hope future creators um continue to push the boundaries of narratives that we need to see on media and allow different people to share their own narrative and have more women plethora of different identities to sh- sharing their story because that's what's missing we we need a change of narrative and we need a change of people who are telling these stories you know what i was thinking right now i was thinking like what if we were given these types of um stories that we want now when we were smaller right that they didn't have a love interest i wonder if it would be as potent as a love story when we were younger because for me when i was watching a love story or like someone who had a love interest once they kissed or once they like had their moments i'd be like oh my god but it's like it what if that wasn't there like what 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 would that like replace like how would that replace would it be like her own achievements would it be her own successes I think you think about this is because we have trained like we have grown up being trained as like that's the main focus and that should be the main interest based like culturally if that makes sense yeah so if this if that wasn't really included I feel like it would just be normal for us you know like we would find something else to get excited about maybe I don't know that's a, that's a really good question yeah that's what I, think I was that's, also thinking about that's how I think about it it's just because like our culturally like that's what we've been known to do I think it's a perfect time for us to hop into discover her segment so what did we learn today something that I learned this episode was just the importance of kind of reevaluating and acknowledging all of the media that you're taking in and the purpose that that will kind of have in your lifestyle i guess just like be mindful of everything that you're taking in because you never know how influential it can be on your life obviously like when you were young like you don't really know that but i feel like now like i'm able to like kind of be realistic and tell myself what's right from wrong and what i don't like and be able to criticize it something that i would tell my younger self is that i'm sorry that there's not a lot of representation on tv um but and there's not a plethora of different stories and no love does not have to be your main interest or center your life needs to be centered around it and there is a lack and there's but that is why you know we're all here i really hope through us talking about things like this we break that and really are demand and create new stories you know and i so that future generations get to see that i think i learned that reflecting back to your inner child and acknowledging how you are now and really reflecting enough to really dive deep into what you intake when you were younger because that has a very huge influence and in how you are as a person you are now and how you perceive these stories these ideals and the way you should be living so i think having that time for yourself and deeply reflect has a huge influence in betting yourself and i think also that um once you are aware and once you acknowledge the problem that you can be active in it and you know if you have younger children around you or if your family members or that your younger that are younger than you you can always teach them and always allow them to understand that mm-hmm. they are perfect 
the way they are and to embrace their authentic self and not judge them or dis dis dismay their 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 authentic self you know because i think when i was younger i didn't have that and that would have been that would have broke everything that i was thinking of if i had someone like this so i advocate mm -hmm. that if you are aware of this then you can um influence and you can inspire other children to love themselves mm -hmm. yeah the inner child healing something that i would emphasize on is that you don't need a male figure to to be successful and to be yourself like to better yourself as a woman you don't need that it's okay to have them but it's just not a huge necessity you know <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, thanks for joining us today. For more content, head over to our IG Girl As We Go podcast, and you can also hop into our YouTube channel. We hope y'all enjoyed your dose of growth for today, and remember to always strive for growth. See you Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>